Welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Let's go to the papers this morning and quickly have a, you know, share with you what major stories are making headlines across Nigeria today. Jide Johnson will be joining us in a bit and uh, getting to share uh, his uh, thoughts. We're starting with the Punch newspapers. Should be on your screen in just a few seconds as always. Yes, Supreme Court's declaration on Buni. Governors hold emergency meeting today. APC chiefs differ. Congress is to hold. It says governors are meeting on Friday. We will know direction after parley, says uh, chairman and APC chairman's forum. Saturday's congresses will go ahead. And also it will be impossible to do so, says Baniri. A little bit of controversy there. Lagos donates agric tools, imputes to 3,000 women and youths. And also EFCC has recovered 5.4 billion naira from trapped 12 billion naira, says the NHIS boss. Lagos laments rising COVID-19 cases, plans more isolation centers. Federal government frustrating UK government's efforts on Kanu's trial, says a lawyer. And lawyer's kick has been a republic picks Igboho's deportation, uh, or plots rather, Igboho's deportation to Nigeria. We can also find on the punch, Atiku Mits Wike says Nigerians waiting for the PDP in 2023. Still on the punch, Hush Poppy, IG orders probe of FBI's fraud allegations against Kiari. FBI links uh, Supercop with detained fraudster, DSP wanted in the United States. Also, Defense Minister blames monarchs and clerics for insecurity, says troops compromised. Lastly, on the punch, bank CEOs summon the emergency meeting over BDC's Forex ban. Moving on to the This Day newspapers this morning. The big one there, APC in jeopardy over Buni's continued stay as national chair. Presidential aides want him sacked. Omar Gege insists his stay is legal. And also this morning, terrorism. Buhari assures British Prime Minister of non-interference with judicial process. Naira strengthens as bank CEOs pledge support for new CBN FX policy. Apex Bank to refund pending licenses, licensing fees to BDC pro promoters says no going back on ban on the FX sale to BDCs. Also, NSIA to invest $200 million in world-class hospital, 20 other projects nationwide. Once again on Hosh Poppy, IG orders review of FBI's allegation against Kiari. U.S. court orders arrest of uh, top cop force headquarters rattled by development. And of course, uh, it says my hands are clean, according to uh, Abba Kiari. And now let's go to the nation newspapers. Igboho's lawyer, why he will remain in Bene prison. Agitator won't be extradited. And the DSS says we are detaining his three associates on court order. CBN directs banks to open dollar point of sale. Popular Lagos monarch Oloto dies at 80. And also um, this morning, role dipens in APC over Buni. Buhari's advisors, caretaker committee has lost legitimacy. Omar Gege, Akintola and others defend Yobe governor. Still on the nation, UK, Nigeria, OK judicial trial for terrorism suspects. And also, um, Buhari will sign petroleum industry bill when transmitted. That's on the nation this morning. My affair with Hosh Poppy, and that is uh, by Abba Kiari. The I Inspector General says we are studying FBI order. Jam Registrar, Oloyede's tenure expires. Uh, NUC, UBEC CEOs affected. Also, voters' ultimatum uh, winners of Akira Dulu's victory, says uh, Tinubu. Well, voters, rather, the ultimate winners of Akira Dulu's victory, says Tinubu. Atiku is in the news also saying Nigerians eager to return PDP to power in 2023. And lastly, on the Daily Independent, IGP orders probe of Abba Kiari over hush puppy fraud. Kiari says hands are clean after U.S. court ordered his arrest. PDP demands full investigation of reports. Lawyers react. Still on the Daily Independent 2023, get ready to leave Asorok, Atiku tells Buhari and the APC. Troops kill 37 terrorists, arrest 16 informants, uh, rescue 223 livestock. Also, uh, on the Daily Independent, Buhari urges Commonwealth support in tackling insecurity, pledges, uh, pledges non-interference in terrorism trials. Robbers attack bullion van in Ondo again, shoot three cops. 
Only technology can guarantee credible electoral process, says INEC. And also, um, who will re respond to genuine demand for Forex, says uh, bank CEOs. Insecurity. Implement 2014 Comfab report now, delegates tell Buhari. I think we'll take a pause there and say good morning to Gene Johnson, Chief Lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning, sir. Good morning and good morning to our viewers all over the world. Thank You're God welcome. it's Friday. Hopefully we have time to rest over the weekend. Absolutely. There's so many very interesting stories from Forex to Abakiari to, of course, the APC Congress. Um, but the big one, of course, that has made all the headlines is the uh, Super Cup, Abakiari, and the allegations that have been made against him by the FBI and, of course, his uh, arrest warrant in the United States for allegedly, you know, getting involved with Hosh Poppy and uh, a lot more. Let's start with that, Judy Johnson. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, well um, the, 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 said it, the IGP set up a committee to investigate every allegation. That I think is the headline in the in in one of the newspaper the week. It was it was it was crafted. The for FBI to have gone to court to to make such um, allegations and demand before the presentation before the court and the court granting the order of FBI to seek the arrest of um, about Kiari and others is not only about Kiari but uh, I think about five others. Um, in connection with Osh Poppy crime, allegedly crime, financial crime, it should be a cause of concern for the Nigerian police as a body, the entire image of the Nigerian police as an institution and the country Nigeria as well as um, the character in this allegation. It is not like Nigeria, whereby you have presentation before, before when we have one, we have media trial before the actual trial commences. You have not seen uh, Osh Poppy being presented before the media by the American um, um, law enforcement officer. So this guy stole money. They've not, they've not done that. What they did is to carry out their investigation. After their investigation, they took the matter to, to, to. To the courts and for the courts to grant them orders to do whatever they want to do well i think the IG, the igp is saying that they want to investigate what fb has investigated what tool or resources um, does nigeria i'm sure even the new york police department has more resources uh, more intelligence gathering uh, methods and techniques as a whole than even the nigerian police the best bet the IG should have done is to have suspended the character involved. Because if it's, let's reverse the case, let's assume that it's another Nigerian that is accused and is being accused by FBI and what if the Nigerian police will have arrested that person and then they will have arrested, they will not even wait for any investigation or what if they will have arrested that person and that person will have faced media trial even before if it's the actual trial in court. I think what the IGP should do is to, is to act um, the guy to proceed on administrative leave while he's carrying out his investigation concerning concerning the matter. The FBI will not come out publicly be, before the court to require his arrest. And if you are very, very conversant, it's just that conversant with what happened in Nigeria. I ask this question, what is the salary of this character in question? That he said the guy saw it, Poppy saw his native on, on social media and he asked him to help him so 200,000 worth of clothes from he himself. Where does he get the money to show 200,000 clothes? What's his salary? What's the salary at that particular point in time for him to show 300,000 worth of clothes? Um, that is, is a liaison officer uh, between East Law and Osh Poppy. And don't also forget, we saw this character romancing with the people in the, in the, in the, in the popular culture industry, entertainment, movies and the, and the rest and the rest of it so he should be asked to proceed on administrative leave the nigerian police want to save his image and to work in line with, with that purpose and if you are conversant with what happened in the larger in the larger society who are those if if you are a lecturer if you're a lecturer or you work in the university system or you work in polytechnism or the is the issue of 
um, Yahoo Boys is a pavilion thing in every institution, except you want to play to the gallery or play to play the street. You see students being guarded by military men. You see students being guarded by police. We all see this. It's police. The, the moment someone asks little money, he asks for police escort and the rest of it. But there's a critical element of what he said. The use of state institution to pursue personal and private agenda. That's a critical for let's forget about that back here. But the use of state institution and resources and personnel to prosecute personal agenda. It is a critical aspect that most people are not paying attention to. Too, because this guy was paid allegedly to ensure that his his his, his rival was jailed, and we have seen situation whereby you have gone to parties whereby the police escort of a private citizen we beat up people or even beat up security, we even beat up um, the the bouncers or the local security people you provided because they escorted they escorted that's the term because that's the term they use because they are criminal. They escorted one big person, quote unquote, to a public function, and it was it was it was it was it was disgraced by by people who do not recognize his status in the position. So that's a critical aspect that we need we need to look at. The use of state security by private individuals who use their personal resources to acquire the authority and the power of the state using state instrument of law enforcement to oppress other citizens. When you drive on the road, you see them. When you drive, when you drive on the road, you see them. You see them um, with their siren. They have no public office oppressing you on the road. So that's a critical issue that we need to look into. Even those that are elected into public office do not have any right to use siren to pursue your eye off the road. They don't have any right at all to use siren. Why should you use siren on your employer? The people are the people. The people are the employers of those in public service. Why should the governor use siren to send the citizen away from the road? And that's absolute nonsense. And that's a, those are some of the issues we begin to look at when we begin to move forward that we take before the National Assembly. If you're a public officer, if there is traffic, we should all go through that traffic. You don't use your, your siren. Your police or military men don't jump out of your car and clear the road for you and leave every one of us in a mess. We must go right. through the mess you have created. Let me stop on that there. On okay. that particular, on that particular story. All right, let, let's move let's to move. Um, another story. I think I'm going to stay also with the Daily Independent. It's on 2023. Atiku Abubakar telling uh, the current administration and party get ready to leave Asarok in 2023. Um, Atiku tells Buhari and the APC. Of course, uh, there was uh, stories of uh, reconciliation let's, between himself and Yes on Wiki. Let's let's um, the interesting thing. I'm in River State presently. Um, the interesting thing is um, let's look let's look at the story from a reverse angle. Just to leave in 2023. Are they not interested in leaving in 2023? Those are the implications you look from reverse angle from the story. Are we even sure there will be election in 2023? Um, are we even sure um, um, Atiku will run on will run? on the platform of PDP and not on the platform of another party. Because since 2007, Ajigo has floated his presidential ambition at different parties, at different uh, different, um, different forum even. So let's read concerning that. And let's tie the story to the APC story that says um, um, there, is, there, is, there, is, um, there is confusion or rule over Bunis Bunis continue headship of the APC. We have said it is an illegality. It's just that the Supreme Court was not as bold as it was in 2019. Otherwise, the election of Undo State would have been thrown out and PDP would have been declared the winner of that, that election because you don't build up, you don't be something on nothing. And what you have with respect to what APC is doing is illegality. And I've said it over time. Um, you don't need rocket science to understand the, the, uh, the, the absurd and the illegality and the impunity with which our political class um, display their authority and power and do as if nobody can hold them accountable. And that's the responsibility of the media according to Section 22 of 1999 Constitution, Section 36 of 1999 Constitution as amended, and the role of the judiciary with respect to um, interpreting the law and ensuring that everybody comply with it. How can you have a chaotical arrangement in a political party? 
in a political party that is a ruling party that is the having a, a system and a structure that contravenes the constitution of that party boni is an elected governor there's a particular saying a dog cannot be too smart to 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 guard two houses how can you be a governor and at the same time you manage a national party a national party wow how can how can you successfully and the concern of the party frowns at that and the APC has perpetuated that illegality is an a perpetuated that, that illegality for almost for close to one year what does it cost them for them when the national chairman resigned what does it cost them for them to have the deputy national chairman to superintend the party until they have their congresses but that national congress was dissolved by fiat was dissolved by fiat and then Boni's um, um, theatrical committee was instituted with governors picked from, from each of the geopolitical zones to form the theatrical committee. And then you will have thought that within three months, APC will have put his house in order. Three months went. After six months, his tenure was extended. They are meant to start their congresses um, tomorrow. How are you sure that at the end of the day, based on the Supreme Court judgment on, 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 on those states with respect to the status of the national chairman, how are you sure that whatever they are going to do is not going to be is not going to be nullified? And we have said it on this program. If we keep track, we, are, we have said it on this program that what they are doing cannot stand the test of water, cannot stand the test of constitutionalism. And the beauty of democracy is to test the the constitutionalism of the actions of the actors and the players in the democratic process at the courts. And the courts will rule we rule on that on, 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 on that matter. So we don't need rocket science APC suffer some losses in 2019 for example in Zamfara state for um, they didn't have election they didn't have candidates in river state um, they lost election in Bayesa state through force major through their own technical and why would they continue on on that on that level finally I'll say this any party that does not have respect for its constitution which brought about this establishment once it gets to power we not have respect for the constitution of nigeria it's very clear if i go into the archives and i bring out what my media interviews i've said this is more than 100 times any question so you don't need rocket science to understand that if you don't if you are from apc you don't respect the constitution of apc or you are from pdp you don't respect the constitution of pdp and you get to power through the platform, you do not have respect for the culture of Nigeria. All right. You do not have respect for the culture. Look, let's talk about transfer the issue to the most case. The DSS, the DSS when got a court order to detain people, the court required them to present the people. The DSS said, okay, we are still holding them based on court order. How many court order under Buhari administration? Under Buhari's administration has been enforced or has been obeyed by the executive because people just believe that we live in a society where there are no laws the supremacy of the constitution is the fundamental principle of the rule of law the, the constitution is supreme is the supreme is what is what determines what happens in the society it's so, pretty much the same thing with namdi kanu's case where he also wasn't taken to court and they blame yeah, the uh, logistics say, it's the same it's the same thing it's the same thing people just think that they can go scot free with their actions they turn themselves to be the law of the society and that's what you have in autocratic society whereby the occupiers of position of authority believes that they are bigger than the society they are bigger than the state and we, we i have told people this democracy was fought and won for on the altar of protest on the altar of the right for self-determination on how to be governed because we are being ruled by military regime and which is antithetical to democratic principle and people protested that no we don't want military regime we want democratic governance and that's why we have democratic governance that we want to be ruled and this is the right of everybody and for people to think that today because the occupied position of authority, they are larger than the state. They are deceiving themselves. It's just a matter. It's just a matter of time. Anyone in position of authority that thinks that oh, he will be there forever, is just deceiving himself. Unam the Carlos case.
Why can't you bring him to court to arrest somebody? Bring him to court. You know, like we said when we review the matter, once the case is brought to court and is reviewed in court, I tell you, it's no longer in the hand of the DSS. Then it's no longer in the hand. It has got into the hand. Once a judge may pronounce it, for example, El Zaki and his wife was released in the course of this week. The court said the federal government had no case after five years of detention. You know how many times they did not take it to court. And I've said it, we must boldly, regardless of our party affiliation, regardless of our partisanship, we must boldly condemn any acts or actions of government that is antithetical to democratic principle. It might be you tomorrow that those in authority might want to use this instrument of the state to oppress. If they wake up tomorrow and they say they want to close all the media houses in Nigeria, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Because we can't silence. And we must not keep silence in the eyes of tyranny. We are not saying people should engage in criminal activities. Anyone that engages in criminal activities should be arrested and be prosecuted. Prosecute the person following the law of the land and the international charter and treaty you have signed to. Prosecute him, take him to court. Let the court run through its process. Be fair. Um, let's tie the story to what the president told the British Prime Minister yesterday. He said the government will not interfere in the judicial process of those that are involved yes. in terrorism. He said the government will not interfere. But you have, in the speech of the president, does it mark the actions of the Department of Justice in Nigeria, which we call the Ministry of Justice? And some of us have said it, that the office of the Attorney General of the state of the state and that of the minister of justice should be separated should be separated and we should insulate that office from 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 politics because that has a critical role in the administration and dispensation of justice in the country the situation where you accuse somebody of a crime and it took you five years before you present that person before court and what what what, what is that justice i'm sure it's exactly should sue the state and get compensation for these five years of his life that the state has wasted. Yeah. Because right. at the end of the day, when the case went to court, the court ruled on the matter that the federal government had no case. And do we want to have similar patterns like we have with uh, Mustafa, um, and Mustafa of, of um, the chief security officer of, 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 of Abacha who wants to become a presidential candidate in, in, in Nigeria today? We must allow the court system the judicial process to follow its due course. We must not provide court will in the will of justice so that justice can be done and justice can be served. And everybody will have confidence in the... In, All right. in, in Finally, the Judy Johnson, uh, before we go, I'd like you to quickly also speak on the uh, bank's CEO's meeting and um, uh, discussing the BDC Forex ban. You know, they are stating that they will be able to meet up with Forex, genuine Forex demands. Uh, what's your response to that? Uh, what, what what do you think? Where, Nigeria is the only nation where you see people selling foreign currency on the street. What you just need to do is to go to major market. And how do you have to stabilize your currency? When you when every Tom, Dick, and Ari engages in in, 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 in forex in forex in forex trade, this is a welcome development. At least you must have control mechanism. You must have a control mechanism as as regards to how the exchange rate of your of your naira to other foreign currencies is done and i hope the central bank governor has as 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 the 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 lever and the power to go ahead with this correct directive because if you want to buy forex you shouldn't be buying it on the street of you mean buying on the street of of lagos or any part of this country but you should go to the bank to do that that will be able to regulate and that will be able to keep track of what currency is coming, and then we have a unified exchange rate. Not that you have one for the banks, you have for one for those that are trading, uh, uh, trading, trading out, outside of the former banking banking sector. It's a welcome development. If you are able to do that, I can assure you that our currency will stabilize. Go to any part of West Africa or any part in, of the world and see me where people will just walk up to you in open spaces and tell you come and buy, come and buy. The police will have arrested. The police will arrest such people and then they will go to jail. If you're able to do that, Naira will stabilize. That right. Ghana CD um, value increases in our lifetime, in our own eyes, better than the Naira, even stronger than the Naira. And we want Naira to be strong because once Naira is strong, our economy will be better and there will be opportunities for people to engage in one form of trade, both, both local and international trade, because there will be confidence in Naira 
and that fluctuation of Johnson. Naira constituency will be, will, be, will be a thing of the past. So okay. thank you very thank much. Thank you also. Thank you for joining us this morning. Enjoy your conversations yes, always, and uh, we wish you a great weekend ahead. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. All right. And that was off the press. Uh, short break when we come back. Today in history, what happened on this day many years ago? I'm going back to 2009 and 1981. And uh, right after that, our first major conversation for today, of course, we're going to be talking about the Forex ban to uh, BDCs here in Nigeria and how, you know, we move forward from here. Stay with us here on The Breakfast. <laughs>